Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm also with Carleton University, the Department of uh, Geography and Environmental Sciences. What I'm talking about in this uh, particular video and a subsequent series of videos is a very recent paper that has just come out by the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, that looks tries to, it's a review paper, it looks at all the literature on methane, um, and it tries to assess the risk of methane, a large burst of methane coming up from the sea floor um, into, in, say, in the Arctic, into the atmosphere, um, and causing, you know, extreme uh, problems to society. I'm talking about a large pulse or a large burst of, of methane. So there, there, science cannot say that it will not happen. Science cannot say that it will happen um, at a particular time. It can only look at all of the processes that are involved and try to assess the risk of this happening. So there's certainly no scientific evidence that would suggest or prove that we're going to have a 50 gigaton burst of methane within the next uh, 10 years, say, even given all of this rapid warming in the Arctic, and that will, you know, basically end civilization, even lead to what a large following of people are talking about being near-term human extinction. The evidence is just not there. The evidence is not solid to suggest that, and this paper is goes a long way into assessing all of the processes um, and you know allows one to say that. That's not to say that we're not in a dire uh, climate change situation, um, a situation of rapid and abrupt climate change um, that will lead to complete loss of sea ice and snow cover in the Arctic and large melt of ice from Greenland, etc., causing accelerated rise in sea level. We definitely have a climate change emergency situation. So the question is, is, you know, will methane basically accelerate that greatly or, or will it not? So I'm basically trying to give the message of this particular paper. It just came out yesterday. So it needs obviously careful analysis, but I'm throwing what I've learned from this paper out to you. So let me just get the light. So here we have the ice sheet um, s sitting on the land and we have these zones, um, gas hydrate stability zones, where the temperature is cold enough and the pressure is cold enough that you have a region in which hydrates would be stable. So hydrates are basically water frozen uh, around, um, say, methane molecules um, that are in a stable situation. There's a couple factors at play. You need to be cold enough temperatures and high enough pressure. And as you go down deeper into the earth, you have geothermal heat, um, so the temperature increases. So you have, that puts sort of a lower limit on the level of this stability zone, and the upper limit is determined by uh, temperatures. Um, and we're up in the high Arctic, so if the temperature is below zero for most of the year, um, well below zero for large parts of the year, then that sets the depth at which you get this stability zone. You can have permafrost layers, and under it the gas hydrate stability zone, and then you could have methane in gaseous form underneath that. Um, here we have high latitude lakes, and as we get rapid warming and water temperatures increasing, we can get methane bubbles, ebulate, ebullition coming from these lakes. We also have these shallow um, Arctic continental shelves where the water is 50 to 100 meters deep, and you can have the methane bubbles coming up, and there's, all, there's different processes by which the methane is released as the gas hydrate breaks down, as the temperature is warming, for example. But there's also um, different um, methods 
where the gas is broken down. The methane gas is broken down and doesn't get up into the atmosphere. So we have these continental shelves. We also have these slopes where we go into the deeper water and we have these areas where the methane is very vulnerable to rises in temperature. Um, and then we have also methane uh, deeper down, both in the gaseous form under the, under the frozen um, hydrate zone area. Um, so what happens is, as the methane is released, as the hydrates um, melt and the methane is released, the methane can bubble up through the water column. There's microbes in the seafloor sediments itself and there's no oxygen often, so we get anaerobic oxidation of methane, breaking it down here. When it goes into the water column, we get um, aerobic breakdown of methane in the water column, and these bubbles can start shrinking and not make it to the surface. Um, we can also get methane uh, accumulating under ice, which will then be released as the ice is melted and we get some methane coming into the atmosphere and there the methane is, the main breakdown process is OH minus hydroxyl. So I'll look at all of these processes in more detail from this paper that just came out. So this is from the USGS um, website, um, gas hydrate breakdown unlikely to cause massive greenhouse gas release. This is their claim, which I will then assess. So this came out February 9, 2017 is the release date. And it talks a bit about what methane hydrates are. And basically, Riff talks about this paper that was just released, um, which, um, you know, a report um, by uh, a USGS person and their co-author at University of Rochester. So. I will go through all of the figures and things that are in the paper, the details. This is just showing, you know, this is basically a press release on it, but there is a link to the paper here and I believe it's open source. So this is showing gas hydrates under the Indian Ocean. This is some gas hydrates from a drill in Canada, um, so-called the Malik test well. And this is some methane hydrates at the bottom of the seafloor underneath this uh, rock, which is covered in, um, in, in basically uh, in mussels and things. Okay, so let's get to the paper now, which you can find from the link. So the interaction of climate change and methane hydrates. First published February 8th, 2017. The press release was February 9th. So um, I'm gonna go over this in great detail in a series of videos. So gas hydrate, it's froze, you know, frozen, naturally occurring, highly concentrated form of methane. So it sequesters or stores a lot of carbon in the global system. It's only stable over a range of low temperature, moderate pressure conditions. Widespread in marine sediments and permafrost. Um, now these are areas with, with ocean warming and atmospheric warming, those temperatures will raise that can decrease the stability of the hydrates, lead to the release of sequestered methane into the sediments and soils. Then there's these different sinks that can reduce the methane levels there and, and the methane will, will go up through the water column into the atmosphere and if significant quantities go up, it will greatly accelerate greenhouse gas warming. Okay, so there's a, basically, this captures the imagination of people, big time. So the synergy between warming climate and gas hydrate dissociation, it feeds the popular perception that global warming could drive catastrophic methane releases from the contemporary gas hydrate reservoir. So th what this paper tries to do is it tries to assess the risks of that. It tries to look at the numbers and see whether, you know, I mean, sure, this can happen, but is it likely to happen? You know, what time frame would it happen in? There's no way that people can say this is going to happen and take out humanity within eight or nine years, which is a popular, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's a popular misconception that's going around, 
you know, we're in a time of Trump, we're in a time of rapid climate change, we have to be clear-headed and try to look at the evidence that is there and not try to jump to worst case scenarios that say, you know, we're all completely, uh, you know, we may as well just give up and, yeah, give up and enjoy your life and, uh, because it's going to be ending very soon and, uh, you know, there's not, I mean, the science just cannot say that, does not say that, um, you know, and to go around saying that the facts say that this is going to happen, it's completely absurd in, in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm trying to have, I have an open mind about this. If I see evidence to the contrary, I will discuss it, of course. Um, but, you know, this paper kind of, you know, it puts things into a bit of perspective. I think it's a very important review paper that people need, need to read and see whether they, you know, that whether there's flaws in it, um, etc. I mean, climate change is always worse than expected on numerous fronts. And, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, with methane, it's still a wild card, the jury's still out, but there is some um, encouraging information that is, um, a, that is in, this, in this paper. So, basically, um, so methane's definitely important to the climate system. So, uh, you know, the global warming potential of methane in the IPCC um, AR5, which was in 2013, talks about a number of 84 times more potent than CO2 over a 20-year time frame. Now, it says 25 times over a century, but I recall 34 times, you know, from this report. So I don't know where this 25 number keeps coming in um, on a per mass basis. <coughs> so, um, you know, obviously CO2 in the atmosphere is pushed over 400 parts per million. Um, methane, 1830, um, 1830 parts per billion or 1.83 ppm. The ratio 400 to this is about 220 times or so. Um, yet the radiative forcing so the amount of heating that comes derives from methane is about a quarter of that of CO2. CO2 concentrations have increased less than 50% since pre-industrial. So 280 in 1750, and it's gone up about 120, which is less than 50%. But methane concentrations have gone up 150% from about so, so 70, 700 parts per billion up to what they are now much more than 150 percent um or um the rate of change so there has been slow periods and fast periods with methane um <coughs> and you know in 2007 it upticked back to a faster period so this is a this is data from an ice core in antarctica so this ice you so basically you drill a hole down into the ice all the way down to the bedrock and you get, you date the different layers and you measure the gas concentration in entombed in bubbles and trap bubbles in the ice to get an idea of the gas concentrations in the atmosphere at those times. And you get the isotopes of oxygen in the frozen water to get the temperature. And what we see here is the methane concentration varied from about 400, 350 to 700 uh, parts per billion over this entire time period, and then now it's been rocketing upward to this level. The scale for methane is on this side, the scale for CO2 is on this side, and CO2 has risen, but not at the same rate as methane. So, the, um, so where are the, where is the CO, where, where, where is the, where, what are the main reservoirs of, of, of methane? and how do they interact with the earth, ocean atmosphere system, how are they released, etc. So these gas hydrates are basically frozen water cage surrounding the methane molecule. Um, so, and the, if you have a cubic meter of the hydrate, that will release 180 cubic meters of, of methane. And I'll end this video now and I'll continue